Right, I'm Geoffrey Hardwick. Uh, I've lived, I was born in the village, uh, Old Stone Farm, lived here and worked here all my life. We're a farm, uh, farming family. And uh, so when we talk about the Heart of Oak Society, it's been a big part of my life, my father's life, his father, and it goes on and on. So uh, yeah, quite a, quite a big thing in our family. What's your current involvement with the Heart of Oak Society? Well, I've got the pleasure of being the chairman of Found Hope Heart of Oak Society. I took that post on uh, this year in the AGM. Uh, I took it on from Mike Andrews, who's been chairman for nearly 40 years, I would say. Uh, he was looking to stand back and uh, so I was very honoured to be proposed and voted in. So uh, here I am, chairman of the Heart of Oak. Did you say your father was a treasurer? My father was treasurer, yeah. I believe he was treasurer for 22 years. So that was some mean feat. Uh, so describe the morning you were before we were talking about when you were a young boy with your brother John, the, the getting the dressing was fixed and he'd go, oh, I wonder if you could paint that picture for us. The morning of the Heart of Oak was just a normal occasion to us. Uh, Dad would go around the farm, make sure the livestock was safe and sound and where it should be. And then he'd busy himself Getting, dressing the club sticks ready for club day. And so he'd do three club sticks, one for himself, one for my brother John and myself. And uh, we used to have a little building by the side of the farmhouse up at Old Stone called the Dairy. And we'd, that's where he'd be. He'd have all the uh, flowers laid out on the slate bed there and just, just get on with it. And I'd just peek through the door watching him busy himself dressing these sticks. And I used to admire how confidently he did it. And uh, I find it difficult doing one, never mind. But he had three to do, but he just got on with it and busied himself doing it and always produced some tidy sticks. So I aspire to do that every year, but uh, fail miserably. But what I find interesting with the flowers in those days, the, uh, and people talk about climate change, and I, he used to use a lot of bulky woody flowers, wooded stem flowers. So he'd use may from the red may from the trees, hawthorn trees, and white may, and lilac. So they were bulky and peonies, something a, a robust flower that would sort of last the day because these sticks had a lot to you get a flower on a stick it's not drinking water so it's gonna wilt a little bit so a, a robust big bloomed flower so was a good thing and we fi I find this day and age certainly the lilac and the may the seasons have changed and the flowers have have gone over so they so we have to look elsewhere now and um which makes it more taxing, more, more difficult to dress your stick. But people complain every year, we'll never have any flowers for the stick, but come Saturday morning, there they all are, a lovely array of flowers on everybody's sticks, which is a great visual sight and, and an aroma, a brilliant aroma, especially when we get in the church, you know, the, yeah, it's good. Tell me about the, the walk itself then. You described it earlier on as being regimental. Can, can, we, can we take that from you? When I think back to my childhood, what, what I find different these days is in my father's time and before, it was all very regimental. The, the members were all dressed up in their finery. They'd have collar and tie and their best suit. 
because it was probably a, an annual day for them, uh, the only prob probably the only day that they'd have off in a 12 month period. And so it was a special occasion. And so they'd dress up and they'd line up uh, side by side, the, the senior members uh, at the front of the parade working back to the junior members at the uh, tail end and uh, led by a silver band, the bow and, and the banner, of course, and then the members. So, yeah, this day and age, it's much more relaxed. And, and of course, it was men only. It was a male orientated society uh, and, they all, and they wore hats. And so it was just a smart occasion, you know, and... Um, yeah, I, I sort of miss that in a way. Uh, I w I'd love it to go back to that, but I think the way people's lives are today, it's just not going to happen. It's, uh, but it's good to see anybody walking anyway. That's the main thing. What about your mother and sister? What was their involvement? My... M uh, <laughs> My mum and sister were always there uh, in the background and uh, probably mum was busy getting breakfast ready because we'd have a full English breakfast and probably Christine, my sister, would be helping or just, just watching everything going on. And uh, because it was a male-oriented society then, it was, they just kept out of the way really and, uh, yeah, let, Dad get on with it and uh, the men enjoy themselves really, so that's the way it was. <laughs> you were talking about the, the events on the field afterwards, the sports and the fun fair, local lads used to help him like you said. Describe that. Yeah, the sports in the, the afternoon, uh, it drew a lot of people in. It was quite a, a big event. There weren't many of those sorts of events going on in the county. And because the, uh, there weren't many other things going on as well, it was a day off for everybody. It brought a lot of people in. There were, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they, were, they used to say they used to enter the, the mile race. So there was, there was quite a lot of effort went into the sports program. And, of course, it was, there was always the... Uh, the backdrop of the fair that, that used to come in uh, and that was a big attraction for people so that was set up and the young lads in the village used to like helping helping to set up the fairground and and dismantle when when it went off the, f the following week and uh, they'd be looking to earn a few bob just for their pocket money and get filthy dirty in the process doing it but Everybody used to enjoy it and just muck in and do it. But yeah, the sports was the sports tailed off in uh, a little while, a little bit. And uh, but we're trying to revive them as more of a family entertainment and traditional sports. And uh, yeah, we're getting there. And whether we'll quite get the fairground back, I don't know. But uh, who knows? The, the church. The, the, the parade or the walk ends up in the church. So what happens there? And like the hymns, because it, you were talking that in the early days, maybe many of these workers were, couldn't read and write. So they used to sing the same hymns. Do you, can you tell me about that again? Yeah, the parade uh, starts at the, assembles at the new inn, and we walk straight down from the new inn to the church where we hold the service. And it's quite a short service, 20, 25 minutes as a rule. And we always sing the three same hymns. And I've always believed these three hymns were the same because people could memorize them. Because many years ago, probably not everybody could read. So they it gave them a, an opportunity to join in because they'd know the words. They'd remember them from previous years. And... Uh, and so we stick to that now. The tradition is to sing the same three hymns and uh, heartily sung they are. And having the silver band or the brass band in the, uh, the church as well, it it's, uh, creates a 
quite brilliant atmosphere, I, I think. And uh, for anybody who's a bit shy on singing, they're always drowned out by the band, so that's no bad thing. Is there, is there competition? Is it underlying this lovely, you know, picturesque event? Is there lots of competition to get the best dress for? Yeah, when we move out of the the church, then uh, we congregate either around the vicarage, but luckily we've, we've stayed in the churchyard, so we've got a bit more space. It's quite a nice area, in fact, and that's where we do the judging of the senior stick. And that creates quite a bit of competition, I have to say, and uh, we've, we've seen some proud owners of their sticks lining up ready to be judged and we we have a, a heart of oak mug which is quite a sought after thing which was introduced a few years by john riddler and uh, he he brought these mugs in and thought it'd be a good idea for a prize and so they're quite unique and uh, yeah so it, it creates a lot of competition a lot of envy but it produces some good sticks and that's the important thing and uh, yeah, it's good to see. So, yeah, since I've been chair, I, um, I do feel a, an importance to try and maintain the heritage of the Heart of Oak. It does get difficult as time goes by because we all lead busy lives. And there's a small group of us that sort of spend a lot of time and effort maintaining this. and. I do feel it's important because my, I suppose because my family go back a long way. Uh, it's to do with rural heritage and farm workers and the like. So it'd be a really nice thing to, to keep it going. Uh, but it depends on the support, I suppose, and uh, people's interest and whether out, outside of the committee there are other people want it to happen so uh, yeah but I suppose because my father was involved his grandfather and probably his, my great-grandfather yeah I'm just another line of Hardwicks uh, uh, carrying on the tradition and uh, I'll try my hardest to do it I've got a granddaughter which thinks it's one of her favorite days of the year and when you hear that coming from an eight-year-old girl little daughter, uh, granddaughter, I, it's just, how can you not try and keep it going? I, it's just phenomenal. So uh, I'll do my best for her, if nobody else. What about, <laughs> that's so lovely. And so, so for example, your granddaughter, um, what's, who dresses her stick? Mm. Yeah, my, I've got a granddaughter and a grandson, uh, so, uh, Evie is eight, and Stanley is uh, six. He's a typical little lad who I don't think's quite got the uh, concentration span to, to walk at the moment, but Evie is definitely well into it, and uh, she wants to stop over Friday night, and uh, when I dress my stick, then she'll probably be there, and I'll dress hers as the way my father dressed mine, so... I keep that tradition in the Hardwicks going as best I can. So. <laughs> That's, That's lovely. That's lovely. You'll get me crying now. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. it's so lovely, Jeff. Um, what about the doctors then? The doctor survey. What was that about? I didn't quite hear that. Yeah, we we because we go round. Uh, we rely on hosts in the village to call into. So. When we leave the, the churchyard and the church, we've had our service, we go to various uh, households and uh, we're very lucky that people invite us into their gardens and homes to take over for an hour or so. Uh, so they have the privilege of the Heart of Oak and the Morris Men and the Brass Band uh, doing their thing and the judging of Junior Stick. And yeah, over the time we try and vary the places we go to. We've been we used to go quite frequently to the doctor's residence, which was the Rowins. That was before the new uh, medical centre was built, and it's a lovely property with a beautiful garden, uh, 
great backdrop, lovely black and white building, uh, not far from the church, so we don't have to walk far. And uh, yeah, we, uh, in my time, it was Dr. Ramage and uh, before him, Dr. Malkin. And there'd be a barrel of beer. And so we'd all participate in a lovely glass of beer. And uh, yeah, it was just very relaxed, fun time. And yeah, there were, we're going to, it's really important to try and go to different places. That's what keeps the interest. People like to go to different households and look around the garden. And uh, yeah, that's what makes it special as well. So, yeah. so what you might find interesting, I was out last night hunting around the hedgerows and gardens for flowers for my club stick. And I thought I'd try and get an oak apple in some of the foliage. So, um, I did, you're never quite sure whether you can find them, but I go to my favorite tree where I generally find something. And um, if I can just grab it. So, so here we are. For anybody who hasn't seen an oak apple, and that's created by the gall wasp, as far as I know, quite how they go about doing it, but they lay there their egg, I suppose, inside there, so it's protected. And little gall wasp grows and uh, emerges and off he goes to look at the Herefordshire countryside. So I'll try and get one of those in my club stick and perhaps that might just swing the balance and I'll wing the club stick for 2018. So there we are. And another th interesting thing you might like to see is I've one of the original uh, club sticks that's been passed down to me. Uh, it was passed to my father's cousin, Gladys Patterson, and I presumed it was Cyril Patterson's club stick that she passed on to me. Uh, it's got the, the oak finial there on top, the acorn, which uh, not everybody realizes is there. Uh, and I was on closer inspection, I was looking and I saw a name stamped on there and it wasn't Cyril Patterson's name stamped on there, it was an E. Jones and the only E. Jones I know was Edmund Jones and he walked in the club uh, uh, with his club stick in the club and quite how Cyril Patterson or Gladys got Edmund's stick, I don't know. So. That'll be a mystery, but there we are. That's what I'll be carrying on Saturday morning, uh, bedecked with a floral array and oak apple. So there we are. How old is it? How old? <laughs> how old is it? I'm not quite sure how old it is. Uh, I've had it for. 30 years, I suppose. It must be 30 years older than that. It's got to be 50 years, 50, 60 years. It might be older. I don't know, to be fair. But uh, I try and look after it. It's very precious to me. Um, I don't want the woodworm to get at it. But uh, there we are. The club stick. It hasn't actually, no. I did think about it. Yeah, I did. Uh, what I did think was putting my name on it might be a nice thing. So, uh, but it's quite a little, th whether the club, uh, the society actually stamped everybody's name on their own club stick, I don't know. Because they're all very individual to themselves. They did, I think they might have got um, mixed up maybe after we'd been round visiting all our hosts and had one too many beers and you prop them, prop them up against a rose bush or something and then someone grabs somebody else's and it's only the following year you realize you haven't got your own club stick. So maybe that's how they get mixed up. But I do wonder with the stamp, whether the society had a stamp and they stamped them and then issued them to club members. So maybe we can do a bit of research about that for next year. 
And next year, I might say, will be 30 years since we reformed. We dropped the friendly society and wanted to maintain the club day, uh, but without the friendly status. And uh, so next year, it will be 30 years. So we're pushing the boat out next year and hopefully we'll gather a lot of old members that haven't walked for a while and uh, have a good old show for everybody. One more thing, Jeff. Um, so, so uh, this is we, we, this is a heritage lottery project. Yeah. Um, we're here today recording your memory of the the Heart of Oak Society Flower Walk. Do, do you think it's, it's a not a flower walk? Sorry, it's a Heart of Oak Club Day Club, club day. Walk. Just Club, club walk. walk. Uh, and it's not quirky either. No, not quirky. No, <laughs> I take umbrage to that. Do you think it's important that your memories are recorded? My memories are reco mm. recorded. So say in 30 years time, somebody might be looking at this archive and... Yeah, so Do you, you, gonna, are you just asking me or are you going to film my response? Yeah, we're filming, we're filming it. it. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might think it's not... Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think, I think, uh, can I say catch a media then or what? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah, give you a bit of a hey-ho. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I'm really pleased I'm sat here uh, talking to catch a media and uh, recording this. I, it's, I think at the time you, you think nothing of it. It's a bit like looking at any old photos when you, or films, you drag them out and then you start looking around and and you look at the cars and the, the way people dress and and how young you are and so that's good for me uh, when I look back but when I'm not here and my family look at it and maybe you know they'll have a smile and think oh did he really wear that or did he walk like that or look at those cars so yeah it's it's uh, a fantastic record really I'm, I'm I feel privileged to sit here talking about it and yeah great good stuff <laughs>